and that includes basically anything that is picked up in the upstream collection of data under Section 702 of the FISA Amendments Act. CISA is likely to be the key piece for letting the NSA and FBI warrantlessly spy on Americans after the FISA court limited that ability a few years ago. Is it any wonder when a $2.8 billion taxpayer-funded j surveillance blimp becomes headline news as the average American citizen shirks when they clearly witness a criminal surveillance state Goliath growing far too big to control. The NSA grows stronger as it collects more of our personal information. The U.S. Constitution grows weaker. John Bound for Infowars.com. So understand that with the passage of CISA, all corporate surveillance of you will be turned over to the government. So think about that as you look at this next story. The Telegraph from the UK points out that Google wants to monitor your mental health and you should welcome it into your mind. It's a great deal. You know, they say it's deeply worrying in terms of privacy, but sadly, it's necessary. Now, they focus on the former head of the U.S. National Institute of Mental Health, Dr. Tom Insel, going to work for Google. And they point out that he's going to investigate how technology can help diagnose and treat mental health conditions. Google doesn't just want to read your mind, it wants to fix it. That's what Drudge picked up on his headlines. That's what's really concerning. Now listen to what they say. A short consultation with a doctor once every few weeks is a poor means of diagnosis, but wearable technology allows continuous monitoring because everything about you needs to be monitored continuously for the benefit of our government. A small portable device might monitor your tone of voice, speech patterns, physical movements, picking up early signs of trouble that could then be turned over to the government saying, we think this guy is about to get kind of crazy so pre-crime can shut you down. That's what you need to be concerned about. And be concerned about the way the police interact with people. Coming up, we've got Jakari Jackson interviewing a film director whose film of, men, of dogs and men is going to premiere this weekend. It's about the police killing of dogs, the epidemic of that. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Break down why you're so proud of these filters. Well, I mean, this, this, the Alexa Pure is really a culmination of all of my experience. It was posed to me as an extremely challenging uh, project. Uh, they wanted a product that would actually operate without any electricity. So you had no pressure. You had to do it all by gravity. And they needed... They really effectively said we need everything imaginable to be removed efficiently, way higher than 99%. And so the result was it, it was it, it's an extreme challenge. Uh, worked on it uh, for quite a long time, and basically what we've done is we created a, the only filter, to my knowledge, that hits all three. It will remove effectively all the major uh, metals, uh, all the major non-metals such as fluoride. It will take out uh, all known microbiological threats, including viral, bacterial, and cysts. And it will take out uh, organic chemicals of pretty much everything, with, with, without exception. It's a very, very powerful device. I don't believe that there's anything else out there in the world that can do that, especially under gravity flow conditions. The fit and finish are fantastic. No, no compromise was made on the quality of the uh, construction. Um, so, I mean, it's really a, a remarkable achievement on their part, and uh, I feel very proud, actually, to be part of the team that put that together. Uh, what's your view overall on fluoride? 
Well, okay. So we actually tested against both the fluoride ion and the fluorosilicate that you mentioned, which is the additive that people put into water uh, under federal control. And basically, uh, we removed both of them with equal efficiency. So we wanted to be sure that no matter how fluoride is added to the water, it can be intercepted and removed. Um, So that's how we've dealt with that. All I can tell you is that we tested against all known fluoride chemicals that are added to water the new ones and the old ones, and uh, we remove them all of equal efficiency. And it's your belief that this is the best gravity-fed filter of the design out there available to the public? Uh, Without a doubt. I mean, most of these uh, gravity flow filters are at best uh, simple particulate filters. They remove dirt and and, uh, debris, sediment. Uh, They're not going to be capable of intercepting a viral particle. Uh, to the degree, we're talking quantitative reduction below detection. No one can touch that kind of capability. Well, I'm impressed, and I want to thank you so much for your time today. It is the Alexa Pure Pro family of water filtration systems available, uh, discounted exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. I want to thank uh, Mr. Redhawk for allowing us to be part of the launch of this. Um, It's on sale right now for their main unit, $177.00. Leading competitors that aren't even as good or more than that. And they've also got uh, the, sur- the survival spring uh, type uh, straw system for survival uh, that uh, is an absolute must have. We had the witness that doesn't lie. We had the videotape. Why is it so commonly justified that we literally shoot five, six, seven bullets at a threat that has never killed? one of us in the line of duty. And that was a short trailer for Of Dogs and Men. It's going to have its world premiere right here in the city of Austin. But don't fret, if people go out and support this, if you tell people about it on social media, you may just get it in your neck of the woods. And to tell us more about it is Michael Ozias. And thank you for joining us today, Michael. Thank you for having me, Jakari. I appreciate it. All right, so for our viewers who didn't see our last interview, can you tell us about your film and what inspired you to make it? The inspiration came from uh, seeing YouTube videos online. Started with one, and I saw uh, James Smoke, uh, Texas Highway, his dog came out, wagging his tail, got shot. Uh, seemed totally unjustified, and it was upsetting. And, uh, and I thought it was an anomaly, but then I found out there was, the more I researched it, the more I found out about it. At this point, uh, we know from the Department of Justice, they estimate that this is happening 10,000 times a year in the United States, uh, dogs getting shot by law enforcement in this fashion. So um, it just became a much bigger issue. I wanted to do something about it. And uh, if, if I were a lawyer, I would have started filing lawsuits. Or if I were a legislator, I would have started trying to pass laws. But as a filmmaker, it just seemed to me that, uh, that maybe a documentary could be something that could affect some change here. And that was the impetus for the project. And that's such a great story because, you know, we get a lot of people, they call into the show and they write us emails and they always ask what they can do. Just like what you said, you said you're not a lawyer, you're not these other things, you did what you could do, you did what you thought would help the situation, and I would give that message to anybody out there who's watching this, and it doesn't have to be dogs, it can be whatever your issue may be, you know, completely separate, but just attack it from the way that you can, so I think that's a very uh, great story, a very inspiring story, because uh, just that number you threw out there, uh, 10,000 times a year, that's quite a lot, because you consider all the people who interact with dogs, whether they're dog catchers or pizza men or mailmen. How often do we hear a story about a mailman shooting a dog? My dad was a mailman for 30 years. He never even pepper sprayed a dog as far as I know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's true. Where there is the will and the need, uh, other solutions are found. And as we know, obviously, if, uh, if UPS and meter readers and mail people were routinely being mauled by dogs, I'm sure the situation would be different. But uh-huh. obviously, they, um, you know, obviously they've taken steps to make sure that they can handle this situation in a non-lethal fashion. And, uh, and we acknowledge that law enforcement is a different animal, and it can be more dangerous and more stressful. And so it is a different situation. But uh, but certainly, as far as we've seen, it's like if the will is there, the solutions can definitely be found. This is fixable. 
Yeah, it's kind of like uh, the only thing they have is a hammer, so everything looks like a nail. It seems like yeah. it falls into one of those type of categories. So tell us a little bit about the production, you know, how long you were working on the film and, you know, anybody else who may be involved in it. Well, it's been about uh, at least two and a half years at this point from initially uh, setting out with a plan to um, to try and do this. And uh, we have we have talked to so many people. We, we talked to many uh, dog owners who lost their dog in this fashion. They told us their stories. We've talked to a lot of law enforcement, um, including police chiefs and sheriffs. We've talked to legislators, activists, lawyers. We, we really came at this from every angle we could think of and just sat down with as many people as we felt could offer insight on the issue so that the audience could get a, a, a well-rounded perspective on what's going on here. That's very interesting. Uh, as far as law enforcement's take on it, was there any uh, particular person or any particular sentiment that stuck out in your mind? Yeah, I would say in the in the course of making the film, one thing that was, there were two things that were really surprising in that regard. One was that um, it was just learning how difficult, the kind of obstacles that, that are faced. You look at something that happens like this and you just think, well, why isn't this officer fired? Or in some cases, even why aren't pr charges being pressed? And then you learn about how deep the rabbit hole goes in terms of obstacles in those areas. And that was eye-opening for me. But also, uh, I it was eye-opening the number of uh, of law enforcement officers who really want to see change happen on this issue as well. Um, I think it's, uh, they tend to get painted with a broad brush and it's assumed that they are all just happy with the status quo, but that is not the case. Well, that's good to know because I meet people of a similar sentiment, you know, because a lot of times we talk about uh, questionable police actions and of course we address those, we put those on camera. But when you talk to some of these law enforcement uh, people, even if they have to tell you off camera and say, yeah, I don't like what's going on here either. I wish this or that policy would change. And that's what we always try to stress the people. It's not police in general. It's the, definitely some bad apples, but your average law enforcement officer, they just want to go out there and help their community and go home at the end of the day like everybody else wants to do. So with that in mind, you say you have the world premiere coming up this weekend in Austin. So for anybody who wants to see this film, what do they need to do? So the film will make its world premiere at the Austin Film Festival. It is going to play Sunday, November 1st, 3 p.m. at the Rollins Theater, and Monday, November 2nd, 4.30 p.m. at the Galaxy Highland. And the, uh, the festival recommends that people get there uh, a half hour in advance, at least. Tickets are available day of at the box office. And... Uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, would would love to see any uh, members of your your Austin audience or or Texas in general if they're close enough and they can come out. And uh, it'll be really helpful for the film if uh, if we have a good turnout. So it's uh, it's important to to get to get people out to to check it out, not just for the film and the content itself, but they could they could be helping the the future of the film as well. Absolutely, because I believe one of the victims of the film was here in Austin, uh, Cisco. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. And Michael Paxton, uh, Cisco's owner, is uh, not only in the film, but he will be present at one of the screenings for uh, one of the panel discussions. Also, Cindy Bowling, who lost her dog Lily in Fort Worth. And we will have uh, Chief Jeff Halstead, who was the, the chief of the Fort Worth Police Department at that time and implemented. Uh, a training and oversaw the training of his officers in response to Lily's shooting. He will be there as well as as legislators and and uh, and other people as well. We've got a great great panel set up for our screenings. Very good, very good. And just for anybody who doesn't know, Cisco was a case that I learned about. It happened before I worked here at Infowars, but a lot of people told me about this when I went out into the streets. And it was an officer responded to a situation. He went to the correct address but it wasn't exactly where the uh, situation was taking place. Uh, long story short, Cisco the dog approached the officer, the officer pulled out a firearm, shot Cisco dead. Uh, he kinda, in the video, he shrugged his shoulders and uh, I believe the police chief at the time just kinda wrote it off saying that you know, it was a stressful situation or something to that effect. But this is just one of many instances we've seen. Uh, we see it all the time, uh, police shootings with uh, canines. You know, Sometimes you can say they're justified, but a lot of times they're not, and it, that is proven by the videotape. So tell us, uh, Michael, in our closing statements, our closing comments here, 
uh, the, the name of the film, where they can see it, all the good things they need to know, the websites, anything else that's uh, pertinent to this situation? Uh, sure thing. They, uh, the film is called Of Dogs and Men. Again, it's a 